Today, uh, we will try to explain what is convolution. It's an important uh, concept of layers. So let's go back to. I will continue this slide. I will use some old examples. Okay, so we started from this one. Okay, this is a very basic neural net. That's one input layer, several inputs. Okay, from x1 to xn, and we have two, one hidden layer. Okay, has two neurons and one output, y. Okay, we have several weights on it and for the red circles, okay, those are activation functions help you to map the nonlinear data, okay, from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, okay, it's a very basic neural network. Uh, we would like to introduce what is convolution, okay, basically it's a layer, what is convolution layer? For example, for H1, which is the hidden layer, one of the neurons in the hidden layer, okay, it receives information from the previous layer, which is X1 to Xn, all the information will times an individual weight which is w11 w21 w31 so on so forth h1 okay which is the neural neural will consider different weights on different informations and sum up them uh, to integrate those uh, information okay and pass through uh, a which is an activation function right so h1 has its own as a perspective okay to view those data okay that is the uh, H1, okay? But what is convolution layer right uh, right here? For example, if we have uh, six neurons at a input layer, okay? And here we have two neurons, which is H1 and H2. And again, we have one output layer, okay? Convolution layer is that sometimes, as I say, H1 has a point of view to look into the data provided by X1 to, for example, X1 to X6, okay? but Sometimes we wish H1 only consider part of the data from the previous layer. So we would like to um, ask H1 only consider part of the data. For example, take it in this way. Okay? We, we, we use three hidden layers, which is for convenience. Okay? For example, we only ask, ask H1 to consider four consecutive data from the previous layer. For example, if H1 only consider the first four information and for H2 it only considered the next consecutive four information from the previous layer like this and for H3 again the next four so um, this one if there are some information okay those information are locally meaningful local means which uh, which I mean is is related to the precision so sometimes we believe some information is only meaningful locally, for example, four consecutive. However, before we do this, make sure you understand one thing. When we design our neural network, at the first place, we have a table, right? So we have uh, several different samples, and we have this one, something like that, right? When we design this table, usually we do not arrange those features x1 to x6 in some meaningful sequence you can put your height in x1 or you can put your height in x so at the first place how did you arrange your features from x1 to x6 we do not have any restriction how you put your features in this table so basically x1 might not might not related to x2 that independent variables independent features however for some special applications such as sequence application time series application and um, the most important application which is images sometimes when we when we, when we would like to analyze an image usually we view it in this way for example uh, that is an image okay so each block right here is a pixel we have 20 pixels and this image and that for each pixel okay uh, of course it has several different colors okay several different patterns okay several different um, for example, like this. And of course, there are some white pixels or black pixels or something, something. Okay. Sometimes when, when we analyze input data, which the input features related to its neighbors, usually when we analyze images, maybe we will name it as X1 and that is X2, 3, X4. Of course, picture is a two-dimension data. So usually that is X5, right? X6. Of course, you can name it in, in a more appropriate way. For example, you name it X1 as X11, make it two-dimensional. So for this very small picture, it has 20 pixels, and we can use 
20 features to describe this image. And for each pixel, you can use RGB. It is a way to describe color. There are three numbers from 0 to 255. It has three different colors. So basically, you can use these numbers, use these features to describe a picture by using a row, row of data. That is uh, one of the ways to describe images. And in this case, usually we believe that the colors of a pixel and its neighbors, its neighbors means, for example, um, for example, this, this specific pixel, okay, which is in green, right? We believe if at this image is meaningful, for example, it is a dog, it's a ball, it is a cat, it is, it is um, someone, the color right here should be related to the neighbors because they might have similar colors. They might have similar shape or something like that. So before you use convolution, make sure your input data, okay, it has certain characteristics, something like neighbors. For example, X3, okay, and its neighbors, X2, X4, and X1, they are related, okay? If you believe your data has such kind of characteristics, then you can use convolution to describe such kind, such kind of data. For a neural H1, you don't have to analyze all the entire images, right? You don't have to do that. Because if you want to analyze some local information and you believe they are related, then you can use convolution such as this one. But there's an important thing that you believe, okay, neighbors' features or neighbors' pixels are related. However, you don't know what exact the positions, you don't know where it is. So basically, you can use a convolution like Lix. H1, which is a neuron only focused on the first few features, first few pixel, try to analyze the input data. So of course, we, we have weight. W, okay, just 1, 1, W, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1. Of course, H2 has its own weight like this and next, something like that. And most important of things is that, uh, of course, those weights can be different. The green weight, the, the blue weight, and the purple weight can be different. Of course, you can design a neural network like this, and you have different weights for different neurons. But the library is provided by uh, Google, by uh, TensorFlow, by Keras, by those packages. Uh, when you use convolution neural networks, you want to design a layer like this, their weights are the same, which means W11 equals to W22. W. It is just an, a, a, one of the way to, to represent that uh, the convolution layer. Conceptually, it is not necessary to do so, but most of the libraries, okay, they do so. So the green, blue, and purple weights, they are identical. For example, um, of course, we have this one. We have another weight right here. And maybe we have a softmax layer right here. And of course, we do have uh, an we do have activation function if you would like to do so. Basically, they look like the same as the left hand side. The right hand side, if you choose the convolution layer, let's take a look at some other things like convolution layer. If you if you uh, Google convolution neural network, okay, usually they will draw a figure like this, something like that. Now this original image, and because it is a two D image, right? So we, we we draw it at like this. So when I draw the convolution layer, you create a small square, small pixel, like this. That is called kernel, or sometimes it has another name called filter. At this moment, you only focus on the x1, x2, x6, and x7. And that is the first area you focus on. And for the next step, they will try to move this kernel, okay, or this filter to the right hand side, from the left to the right or from the top to the bottom. So the next one is, maybe we move the kernel like this, so to this way, okay? So at this moment, you focus on X2, X3, X7, and X8, because they are neighbors, right? So basically, when you try to do such kind of 2D convolution, you can simply say it's like, okay, I have several input like this. And the first neuron right here, it focuses on 1, 2, 6, 7, right? So 1, 2, 6, 7, which is the green. 1, 2, 6, 7. And for the next neuron right here, it focuses on the purple ones. So that is 2, 
three, six, and eight. Basically, if we look at the input data and it is a 2D data, okay, two dimensional data, usually uh, the relationship like this. And of course, you have a lot of different neurons at the second layer, at the convolution layer. It focuses on different area. And the weight right here, okay, of course, the weight right here, they share the weight, those weights. Those four weights, which we usually describe it as the size of the kernel is two by two. So we have four weights right here. So we continually move. Okay, we use another color. We continually move the kernel through the entire 2D images, right? So at the end of the first row will be four, five, nine, and 10. And for the next step, it should be like this. We'll go back to the row, focus on six, seven, 11, 12, and so on and so forth. At the end, it should be this one. So we can move the kernel from the left hand side to the right and from the top to the bottom to describe how local information of the origin data can be extracted by the kernel and we only consider the information in the neuron and we pass the data to the convolution layer. And of course, there should be some other layers behind the convolution layer and we can make a decision how do we deal with the data received from the local information of the original to the data and so on and so forth. So uh, basically, um, if you use TensorFlow or Keras or PyTorch, those libraries to create a convolution layer, okay, there are several things you need to set. For example, what is the size of your kernel? For example, right here is two by two, right? Uh, from the above example right here, from the above example right here, uh, we, we can view it as an 1D, one-dimensional data. And I consider only four neighbors, four consecutive features. Okay, so my, my kernel size is one by four, for example, right? Uh, of course, the, your, your kernel can be larger, like three by three, four by four, seven by seven, something like that. Okay, that is the one of the parameters you have to set if you want to use this. So one is the kernel size. Right here is two by two, for example. The second thing you have to consider is we'll take one step to the next neuron, okay? So right and down, overlap or not, oh, you say all. Oh. Take this example, okay? The green one is x1, x2, x6, x7, right? But the next one is x2, x3, x7, and x8. But you can x the convolution layer not to overlap those kernels. So you can do that x1, x2, x6, x7 is the first neuron and 3, 4, 9, 8 can be the next one. They are not overlapping. You can choose to decide. And of course, when you go to right here, okay, 4, 5, 9, and 10, the next row is start from x6 or start from x11. It depends on your, your decision, okay? It depends on uh, what kind of local information you would like to extract from the original layer. So I have to decide these things. Third is called uh, walk. You can walk from the left hand side to the right hand side, right? So uh, how far away you want to walk your kernel every time in different, we call it stride. Okay, stride is quadruple. Okay. The other one is called padding. So here's an example. Um, the original size is, for example, the uh, is five, right? We have five uh, columns in the original size. Uh, the kernel, kernel size is two by two. Maybe we have a two by two kernel size, and the stride is one. After that, how many outputs in a row? This green kernel, we have output one result, right? The next one is the purple one, right? You will output the result. And next one, maybe the red one, you will output the result, right? And that, the last one, which is the pink one, you will output the result. How many results will be output if you uh, take a walk from the left hand side to the right hand side? Actually four, right? Because our kernel is two by two. So basically we cannot output five results, only four, because we overlap it. The kernel is overlapping. Okay, so sometimes again for convenience, we would like to that the upper size, which is four, equals to the original size, which is five. 
we ask the convolution layer to add one additional column and rows right here so that when we move those kernels there will be one extra place right here and this can still output another result however the local information only include x5 and x10 and usually when we do such kind of padding we simply put zero right here which means no information so in this case we can output five row for this walk okay and this is uh, the direction from here and for example uh, of course and on the other direction as well so originally uh we have uh, we have 30 uh pixel right here uh 30 uh, data right here right it is five by six but after padding and if our kernel is two by two okay after padding we can still output five by six result after we do such kind of uh, convolution it is just for convenient because we don't want the uh, the, the number of the, uh, the number of uh, data in each dimension uh, will decrease when you apply a uh, convolution layer so padding is a very commonly used way to keep the size will be the same as the original 2d data but you have to decide what is the kernel size if you want to overlap those kernel size or uh, how did you do such kind of a walk so i think that is uh good enough so the next thing i'd like to talk about what exactly the weight right here as i mentioned for the convenience usually we set all those weight as the same value so the green weight uh, the blue weight and the, the purple weight right here they are the same but what exactly it means what is the mathematic things we do right here it is x1 weight 1 uh, for example weight 1 plus weight 2 x2 and w x6 x6 uh, w7 x7 right we summation the weight and input value and maybe path through and f activation function and the result will be the value input value of hidden neuron one right okay so basically you times this weight and the original value so basically you can view it in this way okay you and most of the convolution neural network they explain themselves as this here we have x1 x2 x6 and x7 and we make a green kernel and we move it gradually from the left hand side to the right hand top to the top to the bottom right and the weight we, we simply just write the weight right here right so actually the calculation is at the right hand side right it's like it's right here right basically we times this one with this one this one with this one it's it's a very commonly calculation right and we summation them right so let's take some example for example, it is an uh, image, okay? The image looks like this. We assume, okay, the image is a black and white image. So here is the black pixel, and here is the black pixel. Uh, X2 and X7 are white pixels. Okay, if the image looks like this, the value is zero. Okay, zero is black, white is one, okay? So if we have a weight in the kernel, and which product W weight, and the pixel value which is zero or one because uh, we assume it is a black and white image what exactly it means if the weight is something like that usually uh of course the weight can be any real number but for example we can squeeze those real number between zero and uh, one okay so let's take this example if the weight is like this 0 0.0 0 0.0 1.0 1.0 okay if I, I say if of course it, it, it sh should not look like this okay I say if the images is black and white and it, it looks like this okay laptop left button is black right top right button is white and your weights okay look like this when you times this the result will be two right it times this with this one this with this one this is this one so actually when we talk about convolution on image the weight right here it means i'm trying to find the weight if the weight matches the original local information which is the pixels in this kernel if they're exactly the same the result which is the product of the weight and the x 
and we summation them would be largest, right? Take another example. If I have a weight right here, which is 0.5, and the result should be 1.5, right? So it means the weight, if the weight is exactly the same as the original data. After we do the production, uh, after we do the production, 成绩嘛，好，就是向量成绩嘛。And the the value of the output should be larger. Let's take another example, which is the purple example. Okay, if the re if it looks like this, which means the weight and the x they are quite different. So when you do the product and you summation them, okay, and the result will be zero, right? Because you times this with this one, this is this one, this is this one. The product will be zero. So we can view uh, the convolution there as how similar the weight between the local information x1, x2, x6, and x7. So sometimes we have another explana explanation of this uh, kernel. The kernel itself has a weight. The weight looks like another two-dimensional image. Of course, it's a two by two images. And we are trying to evaluate how close the weight to the original data. For the next run, okay, which is the purple one, and the purple one is two, three, seven, and eight. And as I mentioned before, uh, we product exactly the same weight, which is still weight one, weight two. Sorry, um, I should I should only use weight, which is good enough. Okay, we we have four weights, right? Because all the all the weight, as I mentioned before, all the weights of each neuron is the same, right? So I simply just use one, two, and thirty-four to represent two, ah, uh, four ways in this two by two kernel. Okay, so when we do this at the next run, when we shift the kernel from the first uh, x one, x two, six, seven to next one, two, three, seven, eight. This weight, what weight one, two, three, four? They are trying to evaluate how close, how similar. Their value is so. If the weight is exactly the same as x one, two, six, seven, the upper value will be very large. Okay. If the weight, okay, compared with two, three, seven, eight, they are totally different, and the upper result, for example, which is right here, will be very, very small. So at this moment, let's take a look at this one, this this figure. So neuron one will be activated. Because the output value is very high, so no matter you pass it through an activation function or not, the H1, the value of H1 will be larger if x1, 2, 6, 7 looks similar to the weight W. So the neuron will receive a lot, a lot of information from 1, 2, 6, 7 combined with the weight. And however, if the 2, 3, 7, 8, okay, the information from the previous layer times a product with the exactly same weight, which is the kernel. And H2, the, val the value received by H2 is very, very low, which means 2, 3, 7, 8 looks different from W, which is the weight. So H1, this neuron will be activated because it, it has a very high value. H2 will not be activated. So that means uh, H1 and H2 has different point of view to different location of the local data and h1 activate it says okay there is a pattern notice the the the, the word i use there is a pattern which i found in x1 x2 x6 and x7 okay so i upload a very high value which means the neuron is at has been activated and for the neuron 2 it focuses on 2 3 7 8 but the result says no uh the pattern of Weight does not found at two, three, seven, and eight. So S two does not receive uh, uh, does not receive such kind of information. So S two hidden node two is not activated. So that's that is how convolution layer works. They are trying to find a specific pattern which is described by weights and then move through the entire data, no, no matter if it's a 1D, one-dimensional data or if it's a two-dimensional data, okay? They are trying to figure out if there is a specific pattern has been found in some local area. So that is the functionality of the layer.